Now that we've chosen our colors, we know what's gonna go with which color scheme, we know how many paintable spaces we need to have, and we have our color chart, now we're gonna take and use our cutout arch, hence the name radial arch, to begin laying out our paintable spaces. And that's, again, what those numbers stand for. Three to four paintable spaces within each of those slices of pie for our complementary colors. What works the best for most is that you gotta keep them separated. So we're gonna have section A, section B, section A, B, A, B, A, B. To help you remember that, in the upper corner very, very lightly so that you can erase this before you start painting these areas, I'm gonna put an A, B, A, B, a, B, A, B. Now the next part you don't have to write down, but you gotta commit it to memory. So we have A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Now we also have A1, A2, A3, A4. B, one, two, three, four. A, one, two, three, four. B, one, two, three, four. So on and so forth. So when you begin laying out the patterns, think of it as a1 first. Do all of your lines for A1 first, but even more so, you want to illustrate one line, one space at a time. So to draw the lines, you can draw any kind of line that you can with only this tool. So I can draw curved lines, I can draw straight lines, and if I'm clever enough, I can take and draw curved and straight lines together. So starting with A1, we know three to four paintable spaces. Well, for now, I'm just gonna start with line number one. And for me, the easiest way to start is with a curve. So using the curved end on this arch, I wanna do a curve that goes from this center intersect to this intersect right here. So I'll take, Lay the curved end, curved line number one, success. But now, A1 has to be the same all the way around. So I have to be sure that I recreate this precise curve in my next A1. What helps me a lot, rotating my paper so that I can relay and remark the same way every time. So curve, and then I rotate again to the next A1. Curve, rotate again to the next A1. And curve. So now I spin this thing all the way back around, and if I look at it, Curve matches curve, matches curve, matches curve. So by adding this individual line, how many paintable spaces do I now have in my A1 section? I got one, I got two. How many do I have to have? Three to four. So now, getting very clever, I'm gonna take and use, why don't I do some kind of straight line through here? If I think about it, I want a straight line that's gonna somewhat split this area, but I gotta remember, I have to recreate precisely that same straight line every single time in those A1s. So I'm gonna use markings that are already on this paper. So these intersections here are open game for people to use. Now I'm not gonna draw my line all the way to them, but I'm gonna use them as just a kind of a, a marking point. So with the straight edge on this arch, I want a straight line here. So I'm gonna line my edge up with that. But since this is the nearest kind of end point, I'll line them up. And since I'm only working with an A1, I'm not gonna draw all the way through. I'm just gonna draw from the corner to right here. So now, 
recreating the same exact line. I'm gonna rotate my paper, line this tool up, mark it, rotate again. Mark it and rotate one last time. Mark. And then if I take a look at it, I can count them. One, two, three paintable, one, two, three paintable, one, two, three, one, two, three. Knowing that as the teacher, the last thing I like to do is go with the bare minimum. So I'm actually gonna add one more line to each of my A1 spaces. That way I can give it that fourth paintable space. So this is gonna be kind of tricky. How am I gonna do this? Maybe a straight line from here going this way could work. And if I look, Ooh, I might be able to use this as an endpoint, or I could use that as an endpoint, either of those two. So I'm gonna see what that line would look like and what that line would look like. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I, no, I'm gonna go with this one. So lining it up from here to that endpoint, can draw my straight line, giving me one, two, three, four, and I'll rotate, do the same again. Three, four. Okay, now I double check it. One, two, three, four, have them in all. Do I have the same directions of lines? Yep, curve here, 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 here. And then we'll just call this like a V shape. So I've got V shape here, V shape, V shape, V shape. Now my A1s are complete. If I wanted to, I could label my A1s and I could get them painted right now. But we don't wanna paint anything until we complete the layout of that entire section. So now we have the B1s, but here's the kicker. Whatever you illustrated in your A1s, you cannot re-illustrate that in the B1s. You're gonna continue the same idea, but you're not gonna continue by creating the same patterns. So A1 patterns will be different than your B1 patterns. But remember, whatever you do in this B1, it's gotta match precisely in all four. So being creative, being clever, you're gonna use your arch again. I'm gonna get mine laid out while you get yours laid out. Curved lines or straight lines, it doesn't matter, as long as you've got three to four paintable spaces within each of those.
Now, although I've repeated some of the same types of lines, I've not recreated what I previously did for my A1s. So in my B1s, I've got a curve up here at the top or where that kind of, if this was a slice of pizza where the crust is, so I've got a curve here that matches all the way around and then another zigzag or another V shape that matches going all the way around as well.